Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Wednesday the 31st of January. That's for you, Sandy. She said, I never know what day it is when I come on live, and she is correct about that. My name is Betty Sakosha. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in the United States and the team leader for the Power of Positive Inking. <clears throat> I'm on live this morning. I just want to make sure I can see comments. So give me a second to... Check if I can see. Okay. I believe I can see. Just make sure that happens here and that happens. So I hopefully will be able to see any comments that you make. Okay. <clears throat> So, um, Valentine's Day is a couple weeks away, and last year, Stampin' Up! introduced, a, I think it was last year, introduced um, a uh, uh, bundle that had a punch. It was called Country Bouquet, and I still have that, and yet I get caught up in the new things, as most of us do, and I kind of forgot about the old things. So, I just wanted to kind of give that a little bit of love today, and if you have it, fantastic me. Okay, and if you have it, fantastic. If you have the punch, and even if you don't, you probably have punches that will work with this technique. So this is super, super simple. Um, just a really fun technique, and it is completely inspired by Tammy Wilson, who was a, um, or maybe is still, a um, artisan, uh, part of the artisan team for Stampin' Up! that does um, amazing things. And so I saw something that she did and I said, I want to reproduce that as best I can. So that's what we're doing today. Good morning, Jody. Thanks for joining me. So I'm going to flip you down and get started on this card. Maureen, good to see you. Well, see your name. Okay. All right. Okay. There we go. All right. So there is my info if you need it. Betty Sakosha. I can be found at bettyboop.stampinup.net and at boopteakwordpress.com. All right, let me make sure. What I need is in the screen. What I don't need is not in the screen. And I don't make you nauseous in the meantime. Okay. So, uh, let me show you. Should I show you the finished card? I'll show you the finished card. No, I won't show you the finished card. Let's just get started. How's that? Um, what I am featuring is this punch here. And the that coordinates with the Country Bouquet stamp set. These can be found in the annual catalog. This is Stampin' Up's annual catalog. The um, stamp set can be found on page 75. And then the punch can be found over here on page 148. My guess is that they will retire this year because they've been around for a couple years, and that's generally what happens. Um, we've been spending a lot of time with the Bee Mine. Uh, well, there's a lot of Valentine things, but the Bee Mine, is, Bee Mine Suite is the one that I've been featuring. So I've been spending a lot of time with that. So I wanted to give a little bit of love to this before it potentially goes away. Okay, so what you need to begin with is some thick white cardstock. And for some reason, I had a bunch of strips that were already cut. Um, I had, I must have used the paper um, thick white cardstock in a weird side. So I had all these sizes that were perfect. And they are actually two and a half inches by eight and a half inches. And that works out perfect for this um, thing that I'm doing. Let me move that out of the way for a minute so I can bring these in. Okay, Stampin' Up! has provided us with some color combinations. Um, I forgot to pull that over with me, but uh, if you're interested in the color combinations that they um, have suggested, I can get that, so just leave me a comment. Good morning, Joanna. Um, but this is the combination that I'm using. Oh, look, I have French words. If you're working on languages, you can work on languages. So it's Lemon Lolly, Highland Heather, Orchid Oasis, and Berry Burst. So I am going to lay these out lightest to darkest, and I'm going to use my blending brush for these. Now Stampin' Up! has blending brushes that come in this size, and then we have like these little mini cute ones. Either one will work. 
Um, if you do not have a blending brush, they're awesome, and you definitely should um, add them to your wish list. But um, if you want to do this uh, technique right away, I would say go ahead and get out some sponges because that would work pretty well as well. Okay, so let me move these out of the way. Bring this in. So I'm going to pick up some of my lemon lolly. It looks super dark on here, but it's really not. Okay, I am working right on my new glass mat. The glass mat is being offered by Stampin' Up! right now for, if you sign up, um, you get this glass mat for free. And I didn't think I needed it. And in fact, I'm really loving it. So um, it's kind of nice to clean up when you're doing a technique like this. So if you have interest in that, I certainly can talk to you about it, but it's free right now with the starter kit. It cleans up really well. Stampin' Up! actually did have a class glass mat a few years ago that went with a round cutting thing. Um, so you might still have that in your collection if you did. Give that a shot because it's awesome to um, to sponge on. And to stamp photopolymer on. Okay, so I'm just adding a lot of this lemon lolly because um, I found that yellow tends to get lost. So that's the color I want. Okay, so I'm going to move that aside. Bring in my Highland Heather, my next color. You may be asking, do you have a color? Do you have a um, blending brush for every color? The answer is no. I don't. I tend to have them in families. And like, so for instance, I kind of have one that's blue, one that's sort of purpley, one that's yellow, one that's pinky or red. Um, they can be washed. And I did do a video on that. And I can see if I can send you in the right direction to find that video. But you don't need to really wash them often. Once you're done with them, you just kind of run it on paper till you don't see any more color. And then you're good. But they the, the sponge itself will be permanently stained looking. Doesn't mean it's permanently stained. You know, it's like it's like when you paint in some jeans and they're permanently stained, but they're really not. Okay, see that mess there? Have no fear. It's not really going to matter. Um, I'm going to move that aside. In the end, it's not going to matter. So with this technique... If you're not precise, this kind of is the technique for you. Now I am tapping on, with the darker colors, I'm tapping on my um, glass mat just to take a little bit of color off to avoid that, even though I said it's not a problem. Um, <laughs> even though I said it's not a problem, I don't really want it. So I'm just tapping on there and then I can go in and pick up that ink again. So I'm not kind of wasting any ink. Although, technically, this would not be a waste of ink. This is going to come out so cool. I hope you're going to like it. Um, I think you will. I'm going out on a limb thinking you're going to like it. Okay, I'm not loving what I added over here. Um, so, so I won't add any more of that. But I might go back and... Um, well, let's see what I can do when I add my final color, which is Berry Burst. Okay, Berry Burst is a aggressive color. <laughs> it is aggressive. Look at that. Can you see that? It is an aggressive color, but it's going to help where I need help. See? Sometimes aggression can help. All right, let's see. Where else do I want to put this? I should have left a few more spots for some, for some berry. Let's add a lot down here so it looks more like berry and less like anything else. Okay, I'm going to call it. I'm going to say that is done. So I'm going to close up all my ink pads before I have an accident. You know how that goes. If you don't, you're lucky. Okay, so let me pull this aside for a second. I'm going to clean up my um, glass mat. I'm just using a chamois to do it. Some people start with a paper towel and then a chamois, but chamois is all I got here today. Okay, so let me air dry that. <laughs> Good morning, Patty. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my, um, 
This is an old fashioned aqua painter. Um, we now have water painters, I think that's what we call them. Um, this was called an aqua painter. They do the same thing. They accomplish the same thing. Um, if you don't have either one, either the new or the old one, you could use a paintbrush for this. So what I like to do for this technique is just use a little jar, put a little bit of water in there. Can you see? I don't know if you can see, but there's a dimensional top in there. It happens. Anyway, okay. So I'm just going to kind of tap off a little bit of water, and then I'm going to hold my finger down and just spritz. Let me show you how beautiful this comes out. I'm not spritzing. Did I say spritz? I meant flick. <laughs> so this is literally just water. It's not even alcohol. I suppose you could do it with rubbing alcohol. Maybe it would dry quicker. Now I'm going to just turn it this way. I don't really want to lie it in the water that's all over my table right now. But I'm just going to try and get the other side because I tend to flick in one direction. Okay, you have to know when to stop. And in general, that's kind of a, a tough thing for me to know when to stop. But I think I'm going to call it there. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, let me pick this up. Clean off my, dry up my surface here. Oh, I know. We don't even have to do a card, right? That's so pretty. And depending on what color combinations you have, it's going to come out completely different. Um, this one is darker than most that I've done so far. I'm going to show you some samples when we're done of other ones that I have done uh, because I probably didn't know when to stop. So this one is a little bit darker, but it's going to just have a different look to it in the end. Okay, so I'm going to set this aside to dry. Again, I used thick white cardstock for this, um, and it seems to work really well with thick white cardstock. Let me just zoom you up here because the next thing I'm going to do is bring in my big boss. It's my stamp and cut and emboss machine. And I am using this, um, ooh, I don't know what we call this. Shocking. I don't know what we call it, but it's a, um, it's an embossing folder that has, it's like distressed looking and it's got brick and oozing mortar, <laughs> but it is not called the oozing mortar embossing folder. I forget what it's called. Anyway, any embossing folder will work fine with this. Just a little helpful hint here, if it matters to you. Um, this pattern, while it is distressed, has some bricks. So you might want them to go straight. And if you want them straight, if you follow this line here, if you line up your um, cardstock along that line, it will come out as intended. Some embossing folders don't have a pattern that need to be straight, and some do. And some of you need it to be straight, and some of you don't. So you know who, if you know it's you, there's that line for you. You're welcome. Okay, so this is a thick uh, 3D embossing folder. So I just need my bottom platform, and then my top gray platform. Layered bricks. Maureen is telling me it's layered bricks. She's probably right. She is probably right. Um, I do have a note on my embossing folder that tells me um, which end to put through first. And that's just to save on the hinge. If you put through the other way, it kind of, um, just, it's stressful on the hinge. And no one needs any more stress in their life, right? So I just put a note right on it so I know. Okay, now bring it down. This is how my layered bricks comes out. So it's subtle, um, but that's what I was going with. I really enjoy cards that are kind of white on white. Um, if you followed me for any amount of time, I do a lot of those cards because I like them. Um, so I'm using thick white cardstock here as my base, and then I'm going to put a layer of white layered bricks on top of it. All right. Um, so I'm going to, so for this embossing folder, probably should let you know this. There we go. Can you focus? Come on phone. Okay. So your bricks can stick out. 
See how these bricks stick out? I'm having a hard time focusing here. Bricks sticking out or the other side where the mortar oozes out. The oozy mortar look. So it depends what look you want. I'm going to go with the oozy mortar, I think. So I'm going to put this. I'm going to put dimensionals on the back here. When you are using white on white or any color on any color, it's kind of nice to raise it up with dimensionals. It just adds a little bit more to it, kind of pops it since it's going to be white on white. So I'm going to put that on the front of my card, like so. You're thinking, that's pretty white. Yes, it is. Okay. Meanwhile, back at the lagoon, this has dried. So now my card is ready and I'm going to bring in my punch. So as I told you, I did a two and a half inch by eight inch strip and I need five large hearts, this one, and five small hearts. These match up with some leaves from the, um, from the stamp set. So that's what those are all about. But I'm not going to actually use this today. I'm just going to use the hearts. So... I am going to go in, but I'm going to go like close to the edge because I don't care if this gets cut off here. That doesn't matter. And I'm going to get five hearts. Again, move them wherever you need to. You can flip it over if you think, oh yeah, I would like a little one that looks like that. Perfect. I think I have a lot of... Um, berry burst in my large heart, so I'm going to do that here. And then my final one there. Okay. Even that's pretty, right? I don't know what you do with that, but it's pretty. Okay, so I am going to pull out all of my large hearts and all of my small hearts. I need five of each. And then I'm going to get rid of all of these excess leaves. Okay, so let's turn them all over. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Bring in my dimensionals. I'm going to use one large dimensional per heart. Whoops. Guy just popped right over. Did you see that? Okay, and once this guy popped over too, it's like, like the hearts are alive today. Okay, let's stick these on like so. Okay, now dimensionals come; they have they have backing on them, um, so they will, um, so I can play around with them. Hey, Nancy. Thanks for joining me. I'm doing this, this cool technique that I saw from Tammy Wilson of the um, Artisan team. She did a card very similar to this last year. Or I'm trying to do a card similar to her, I guess is how I should say. Okay, so now I'm going to layer these kind of all over the place. I want them to go in every direction. And I don't want to put a whole lot of thought into where they're going. I just want them to go. I think I'm going to say yes on that. And then I'll fill in the others. This technique, first of all, the technique itself lends to a little bit of a mess. <laughs> so if mess isn't for you, maybe this isn't for you, but... Um, the beauty of it is it kind of, it allows you to just, it, it kind of, these are going to end up where they're going to end up. I feel like they're a little bit too symmetrical and I'm not loving that. So I'm going to do this here. Okay. Then I'm going to bring in some other guys. Let's see. I'm going to bring in my smallers and see where I want to, where I want to stick them. Hmm. 
Hmm, let's see. How about we do a couple over here? And then, yeah, I glued that down with a glue dot, so I'm just going to move you right up because I feel like, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm feeling this. I do have a lot of these berry burst ones. I could go back in my paper and get, let me actually do that because I kind of want a little, a little one that's got some different colors. So remember the scrap I had that was so pretty? I think I want this guy up here. Yeah, that's what I want. That will mix it up nicely. Okay, dimensional back for you, my new friend. Um, these hearts were super easy to make, Nancy. If you go back and watch the beginning, basically, it was just a bunch of blending brushes and a bunch of ink. Um, and as I mentioned earlier in the video, if you do not have blending brushes, first of all, add them to your, to your wish list. But in the meantime, I think you could get away with the same kind of look with uh, sponges. Okay, I kind of like the look of that, that it's just kind of falling across the page. So I think I'm pretty pleased with this. Okay, I'm going to bring in a couple, like, you don't really need to do anymore, but I'm going to. I'm just going to add some, um, some of these that are called Trio Sequins, Trio of Sequins. And there are some pinky and some that are kind of whitish. Clearly, I use them for other reasons, and so... I kind of have a mess here, but um, let me bring in some whites and some pinks, I think. Let me start with the pink. And if you don't have, um, if you don't have a pick a tool, this is the perfect time to think about getting them during celebration. A pick a tool is this awesome little tool that's got, well, it's got a bunch of things on it. That's why it's called pick a tool. Let me see one up there and maybe one more baby pink. Here we go. So I've got five on there. So the pick a tool has putty on the end and it's perfect for picking up sequins. What I love about these sequins is that they are adhesive back sequins and sequins do not add any bulk to anything. So it doesn't cost you any more to send. Now this card could be a Valentine's card or it could be kind of an anything card. I'm going to make it an I love you card, um, which could be for anything, right? Who says? Who says it needs to be for Valentine's Day? Um, just a Wednesday morning, I love you. So I'm using a tiny strip of paper. You often end up with these half-inch strips. Um, and they're perfect to keep around for, for this kind of a thing. All right, so I am going to go in and just flag the ends. We have all sorts of ways that you could put a greeting on here. This is super simple and doesn't require anything. So if you've got your some kind of a punch to punch out some kind of a shape, this one happens to be hearts, but some kind of a shape, maybe butterflies or hearts or I don't know, even circles would be cool, right? Um, and then you've got a little scrap of paper and um, a little greeting. You don't need a whole lot else to make a stunning card. All right, I am going to put dimensionals on this just to pop it up. Like so. There we go. Okay, boom, card is done. Here, let's move this away. Um, remember I have this extra heart? I'm going to put this on the inside. Hi, Sandy. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to put this on the inside because I, I had it left over. 
And actually, I can't stop. Right? I'm going to go in and add a couple more. You can just move. See how moving that around is going to change what you, what it looks like. So I've got that. And because I want an odd number, I'm going to go in and grab one more. Okay, so I've got these. And since I don't have any other adhesive at my desk right now, we're going to use baby dimensionals and stick these on the inside. So I'm going to kind of toss these. Um, by toss, I mean I want kind of a scattered look on the inside of my card with these. Probably the idea would be if these were flat, it'd probably be better, but um, let me see, I kind of like it like that. Like they're just kind of flopped, right? Ah, okay, there you go, boom, done. Just clean that surface right off. Okay, let me bring in a couple other examples. Um, I thought my paper wasn't going to dry on time, so I actually made another um, paper. Once you have these papers, you're never going to stop. These make great backgrounds. But let me show you a couple more that I did. So I used the, the color combinations that I told you that um, Stampin' Up! has that I will try and see if I can. If you are interested in the color combinations, leave me a comment and, and I will message you with the information. But here's another one that used Lost Lagoon and Peacock and uh, something else, something light. <laughs> Bubble Bath maybe and Moody Moth. So it's a little bit softer because we all have those friends that are a little bit moodier, right? <laughs> yes, we do. Okay, this one here used um, brighter colors, but kind of more pastel-y, brighter colors. And then here is the original one that I did here. And I use these words, I love that we are friends. That comes in the country bouquet set. But um, any words that you have, and this one doesn't even have words. I kind of like it just without words. Um, and all of these sequins that I've used here come from the same trio of sequins. It has a backed, adhesive backed sequin trio. All righty. Let me flip you around. Flip you around. Flip you around. There we go. Oops. Okay. Um, so that is it. My thanks to Tammy Wilson, who came up with the original card. If you Google it, you can find Tammy Wilson under the um, artisans. Hers has a lot of like the, the reds and oranges, just stunning. And you can use it for anything. Um, so again, this is the Country Bouquet um, stamp set, although mostly it is the punch, which is called the Country Bouquet Punch, um, which can be found in the catalog now. Or if you have another heart punch or anything, any kind of punch that has a shape, I think would be really cool. Like I said, even just a circle punch would be a lot of fun. So thank you for joining me. Um, if you are interested in anything that you saw today and you need to get your hands on these supplies, please reach out to me at bettyboop.stampinup.net. Hello, Barbara Lash. Late to the party. Um, oh, daisies would be gorgeous, Nancy is saying. If you have a daisy punch, go ahead and try this. It would be stunning. Um, in any case, if there's anything that you need, please visit my website at bettyboop.stampinup.net um, or visit your demonstrator if you have another demonstrator. Um, and I will be here, I think, next Wednesday. It's my goal. My goal is to be here every Wednesday morning, whether it's live or not quite live. Um, that is my goal. If you are interested in finding out more about the glass mat or what it takes to be a demonstrator, P.S. takes very little. Um, just a commitment to wanting to get a discount on your stuff. Honestly, it's that easy. But um, just reach out to me and I um, will provide you with some more information. Um, yeah, that's it. Uh, leave me a, leave me a comment if you are interested in the color combinations because I can um, see if I can get that. Nancy, it was great to see you. It was great to see all of you or all of your names anyway. And I hope you all have a great day and I will see you next Wednesday. Have a good day. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.